Have you seen that exercise before for cervical neck posture or fixing that forward head posture? Hi, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being part of our community. Thanks for all you do for your clients and your community as well. As you know, many of our older clients struggle with balance. Even our younger clients, when I say younger, it's all relative. <laughs> I consider myself younger-ish. But even clients my age struggle with balance. Many of you and I sometimes struggle with balance and or we see these asymmetries in our balance from side to side. One of the things that can drive a lot of balance issues is your head position or your client's head position. That forward head position changes the alignment of the head and the upper cervical spine to the rest of the body. Now, when we think about balance, balance is really, posture and balance are really reflexive actions. Meaning we have these reflexes in our eyes, our inner ear, and our upper neck that all respond to stimuli coming to us from our environment, from what we see to how our head is moving, how our eyes are moving, as well as the information we're, we're receiving from our proprioceptive system, which tends to be highest in three areas of the body. The hands, which makes sense because we touch things and we manipulate the body, or should say manipulate our objects with our hands. Our feet, because that's our contact to the ground, and also our upper cervical spine. The upper cervical spine has been shown in some of the research that the most dense proprioceptors are in the upper cervical spine. C1 to C3 has more proprioceptors than most of the rest of the body. So again, because the position of the head and neck is so important to telling the nervous system or relaying signals to the nervous system about where we are in space. And obviously orienting the eyes as well as the inner ear to our horizon. Hey, my good friend Damien and fellow integrative movement specialist in training is joining us. Good to see you, my friend from Pennsylvania. So when our clients have the forward head position, we will lose a lot of cervical rotation. 50% of our cervical rotation comes from the upper cervical spine. When we think about now our clients not able to rotate their head and neck. Hello, my good friend, Jackie, another integrative movement specialist down in Houston, Texas. I will see you soon. And my other buddy, my good friend, Steven Schmoll, another integrative movement specialist. Welcome to our Facebook Live this morning. So when we, our clients lose their ability to rotate, they will lose a lot of their balance and they'll have to start to move their head and their body, I should say, if they can't rotate their head and neck, then they'll have to start to move more of their body to rotate or when they're walking or when they're doing dual tasking. Most of our clients will fall, most of the older population will fall when they're doing dual task activities. They're carrying something or they're talking to a friend and if they go to turn and they don't have cervical, cervical rotation, they'll start to make up for it with their body and hence why so many of our clients, because they probably don't have great trunk rotation either, so that's another reason why our clients will fall. Now let's return to the upper cervical spine. If we think about that upper cervical spine, we think about the brain stem here is coming out right below or in that the spinal cord, I should say, is right below the brain stem and that's coming right out from that foramen magnum, that big hole in the back of the skull. Well, right below the occiput here is that C1. Your suboccipital muscles help to connect or I should say connect the occiput to C1 as well as C1 and C2 as well as C2 to the occiput. So these suboccipital muscles are very dense in proprioception. So again, it's very important that we have accurate feedback from those muscles and from the upper cervical spine. And remember, as I mentioned earlier, that 50% of our proprioception is in the joint capsules in the upper cervical spine. So now put your fingers right below your, so find that mastoid process. So that's the bone right up in the outside of your skull, right behind your ear here. Now, if you drop down, from the mastoid process, the first bony structure you will push into are these, this point, the transverse process where my middle finger is right there, the transverse process of C1. Now think about that spot, that space. Now as the head and neck come forward, which many of our clients have that 
posture that now that you're compressing down that occiput or the skull on top of C1, and hence C1 on C2. Now, keep your head in that position, or just put your head in that position just for a moment. You can already feel like it doesn't feel great, right? Now, try to turn your head, and you realize that very quickly, you'll get locked up. You'll lose a ton of rotation when you have that forward head position and that compression on the suboccipital joint. And if you see somebody like me, if you will actually look right behind my skull there, you'll see that line. That line is a compressive line because the occiput is now sitting down on C1. So now, if we think about, if we can change our client's cervical position, the head and neck position, we can potentially decompress the spinal cord and the spinal nerves that are coming out there, and also restore that, or I should say, give a bit more optimal proprioception back to the central nervous system. So you see a lot of PT exercises, or people doing PT type exercises, where they're taking their client from here and just going straight back with their chin, just trying to jam the chin back. And if you put your hands on your neck and do that with me, you'll realize that it doesn't really change your neck position. And even if it does, it's probably reversing the neck curvature. So it's not a great strategy for a lot of our clients. It may be a great strategy in the short term if you have a disc problem, if your client has a disc problem, but not a great long-term strategy. Here's a much better strategy. Now you may need to do some soft tissue release in those suboccipital muscles, but more specifically, the muscles that lay over top of it. So if you look at the back of my head here, you see the EOP there. The EOP is a bump of knowledge or the external occipital protuberance. Well, your upper trapezius inserts right below and lateral to that bone. So here's what you can do, have your client do, is take their thumbs, stick their thumbs right back in there and just do some real soft and easy massage. So again, they'll just self-massage. Because the one thing you have to be careful about is you have a lot of blood vessels and nerves, obviously. Blood vessels and nerves, like your vertebral artery, so this red structure here is the vertebral artery, and you can see how the vertebral artery comes right out from your brain, or from, from below your foramen magnum, I should say, not your brain, but below your foramen magnum. It's a blood supply to your brain, so that's why you don't want to push around that suboccipital area if you're not familiar with this area and you don't know your anatomy and you're obviously not skilled at it. So you have to be very careful and you and we often, we I should say we frequently do not give our clients self myofascial release here besides using their fingers on the superficial muscles, which still works extremely well. But again, if you wanna get into your neck, just be careful, don't jam stuff in your neck, don't have your clients, you know, be careful with the massage therapist and manual therapist that your clients work with so that you're working with a qualified person. So again, let's go back to this upper trapezius and go right below that bump of knowledge. So right below that bump in the back of the skull and just do some easy light massage. So even though you're not massaging the suboccipitals, you are massaging the, the attachment of the upper traps, which can also bring the head down as well. Now another area you can do some self-massage on, and again, you have to be careful here because there's arteries coming down your neck here, your carotid arteries come down the front side of your neck to supply, again, some of your brain as well. So you can take your, your SCM here is another muscle, so it comes from that mastoid process, so that bump right behind your ear again, and it comes down to your clavicle as well as the top of your sternum. Well, that muscle will help pull the sternum up to help you breathe, However, when that muscle is short and tight, it will drive the head forward as well. And again, compress that suboccipital area. So you may have to do some release there. So we can have your client do, and again, be very careful. If you, if you know your client, and, and you have to be careful with some of your older clients, because again, they have placking in their carotid or their vertebral artery. So again, you have to be careful with this. So again, this is something you may be able to do for yourself, but don't have your client do this, especially if they're older, especially if they have placking of their arteries, if you know they're on cholesterol, you know, sort of medications, they probably don't, don't have them do this. Because again, you don't wanna have them accidentally grab their carotid artery and cause an issue. They likely won't. However, you have to be careful with some of these positions too. That's why some people can stroke out washing their hair because when their head goes back there, they can, stroke out because you release some of those placking from the arteries. So again, just be careful. So again, that SCM is about from where the mastoid process is to where my finger is here and the clavicle and the sternum. So if you side bend your head, you can sort of grab that muscle right here. That's the SCM. So just do a very slight, and again, if you feel a pulse, get off that muscle. 
don't sit there and over, don't dig around that pulse. So just stay on the muscle, just a nice easy squeeze there, nice easy squeeze there. And again, it could be tender, but again, make sure you're not, your client is not on the pulse. Like I said, this is more for your benefit than your client's benefit. I don't give many of my clients this unless I've taught them how to do it and I'm pretty confident that they're not gonna go and push on their artery. And again, just bring it right down, just a nice easy squeeze. Same thing on the other side, soften, lateral bend, soften, and you'll feel that muscle, but again, stay off the artery, stay away from the artery. Again, do this on yourself, don't give it to your client to do. I'm just sharing with you something you may do with your client in case that, you know, more for your own benefit more than for your client, okay? Now you've done a little bit of soft tissue release on the upper trapezius, you've done some soft tissue release on your SCM. Now let's retrain that position a more optimal position of the head and neck. So now what you wanna think about doing is almost lifting, a cue that works really well for your client is thinking about lifting the occiput up off C1. So lifting the skull up off C1. And again, it's more of a visualization, so you're thinking about it versus actually doing it. So you're not trying to jam the head like this, just visualize lifting that head and neck off C1 and just imagine that the rest of the body is following it. And actually, if you're in this position, the forward head position, you can kind of see that once I change my head and neck position, the body follows it. Your body will follow, the rib cage follows where your head and neck goes. That's why if your head and neck go forward, your thorax will kind of follow into that position. So think about lengthening, more think about it versus forcing it, and then allow the eyes to just look out into the distance hold that position and now just take three or four breaths into that position because again you want to teach the brain i should say teach your respiratory muscles and your brain your nervous system right you're always training the nervous system train your nervous system to maintain this position so that the scm can start to lengthen the upper trapezius starts to lengthen the rib cage starts to expand more with the head in a better position so three or four breaths so that way you're, you're encouraging a more optimal head and neck posture. You're encouraging more optimal feedback from the proprioceptors in that suboccipital region as well as the joint capsules because you're essentially decompressing the joint capsules and the joints themselves. And you're also helping the client learn how to change their vision because remember, a lot of our clients are on their cell phones looking down or they're on their computers looking this direction so their eyes have gotten locked into that posture. So not only do you wanna change your client's alignment, but then you also have to change their vision to that new head and neck position. Because again, we have that reflex from the eyes to the vestibular system to the central nervous system. So again, you start to change the posture, you also wanna change the visual sight as well. So you can also change that or work with that in your clients as well. However, start with just a little bit of soft tissue release, upper trapezius, start with SCM release. We did, again, remember, just do that on yourself. Don't do that with your clients, just because you don't wanna risk your clients and those arteries coming down through the, verte the vertebral artery or the carotid arteries. However, cue your client. You can cue your client to get longer through the back of their head and neck to create space or visualize that space between the occiput and C1, that first vertebrae of the neck, and then cue your client to look out in the distance, and then you can add in your balance exercises, standing on one leg. You can challenge them with a ball toss. You can challenge them with then moving them into different planes of motion, like doing a lateral step or doing a rotational type step. So that way you're reinforcing this optimal alignment with posture, with movement, and with balance activities. And again, that's how you start to teach your client a more optimal strategy for posture, for balance, and ultimately, you'll take this into walking. And that's how you can help so many of your older clients address a very common cause of postural issues, chronic neck tension, loss of neck range of motion, and even when these issues relate to falls. So it's a really great fall prevention strategy as well. And that's how you become a specialist for your older clients and attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. I hope you enjoyed that session. If you did, leave a comment below. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. This weekend, this Saturday, Jill and I, the two anatomy geeks, are coming 
back with our brand new series to end the year. We've got a three series, three part series of Two Anatomy Geeks. We're covering posture in session one this weekend. So we'll talk more about the suboccipitals. We'll talk more about the visual, visual system and how that relates to, relates to posture and balance. Session two will focus more on the foot, the intrinsic muscles of the feet and how they send reflexive signals back to the central nervous system. So how you train them from a conscious standpoint or from that sort of that proprioceptive sort of approach so that we can improve proprioception down in the foot for our older clients So we, because we know we need that. And then in part three, in a few weeks, we'll go into more, taking this information more into walking so that way you help your clients posture balance and walking you train the proprioceptive system you train and we'll show you how to incorporate the eyes into it to a certain degree as well as a vestibular system so that way again you can help more of your clients that have a risk of falling and for those that even aren't at a huge risk you still give them a strategy that they that they can use and incorporate into the rest of their lives so the link is below this video or next to this video wherever you're watching it we look forward to seeing you it's a great way to learn your anatomy in a fun interesting way and more importantly it's an applicable way to use this information to help transform your clients lives and help you become that specialist for your current clients so Look forward to seeing you. Damien, I'll see you Saturday. Steven, I'll see you Saturday. Jackie, I may see you Saturday as well. And if you're looking for more information, like I said, click on the link. We, we would love to have you. It's a great community. It's a very supportive and, and encouraging. It's a great way to start out Saturday morning. And if you can't be on live, we record all sessions. And then once the se series is done, we apply for CECs. So that way you will be able to get CECs in 2022 for the series. We look forward to seeing you. Make it a great day. This is Dr. Evan Osar. Look forward to seeing you next time at Tune Out of Geeks as well as Integrative Movement Insider. Take care.